my friends, my name is AJ and welcome or welcome back to my book nook. Today we are going to be talking about a classic book series that a lot of people probably have never even heard of. It's a fair bit of a cult classic and most people I've asked have never even heard of it. And it's actually even hidden on my bookshelf as well. But today we are going to be talking about the Betsy Tacy series by Maud Hart Lovelace. The Betsy Tacy series is a 10 book series as well as three other shorter stories which follow a character by the name of Betsy Ray and her lifelong friendship with her best friend Tacy Kelly. It was originally written and published by Maud Hart Lovelace between the years of 1940 to 1955 and chronicle her real life friendship with her best friend Bic. Now every single character in this book is based on someone that she knew in real life and the events that happen are loosely based on things that she did growing up as well. Obviously there are some artistic liberties just to make the story a little bit more cohesive, but it's definitely a really great series. My introduction to this book series actually came from another book series which I rave highly about and that is a series called the Mother Daughter Book Club. This series of books follows these four sets of mothers and daughters from Concord, Massachusetts as they go through this book club together as well as dealing with growing up, middle school, high school, and just sort of a regular coming of age series dealing with problems that are also similar to the problems that the characters in the books that they are reading. This book series actually introduced me to a lot of books and it introduced me to my love of classic novels, probably the reason that I didn't read any young adult novels through high school, I was only reading classics. And while some of these books like Pride and Prejudice or Little Women are fairly well known. The one series that it introduced me to that most people I know haven't heard of is the Betsy Tacy series. And honestly, I wish I had been introduced to these sooner because I don't think I've ever felt so represented by a character as I have by Betsy Ray. As I said, this series is a bit of a cult classic. Most people have never heard of it, but those people who have are deeply, deeply passionate about it. In fact, there is a Betsy Tacy Society, which actually had an event where the grandchildren of the real life counterparts of Betsy and Tacy and Tib and all of these famous characters got together and sort of talked about the book series. So today I'm gonna try and sell you on these books and I'm gonna do that by just going through a little bit of the synopsis of each of the book series as well as just talking about why I think these books are so effective. So the first volume is The Betsy Tacy Treasury which has the first four books in the series. Betsy Tacy, Betsy Tacy and Tib, Betsy and Tacy go over the big hill, and Betsy and Tacy go downtown. These four books focus on Betsy's childhood from her first meeting Tacy at five years old up to pre-high school. These ones are fairly young, as you can see there's pretty short to have four books into this entire volume, but they're still fun and they're still just sort of a good way to get introduced to these characters and they're a good way to introduce younger audiences to the series who get to grow up as they read the books too. So let's break it down. Betsy Tacy is the first book in the series and it follows Betsy Ray and her brand new friend Tacy Kelly and their developing friendship. It starts at Betsy's fifth birthday party after Tacy moves to Deep Valley. We get to see them start school together and we get to see some of their little traditions start. This really builds sort of the foundation for their friendship. Betsy, Tacy, and Tib introduces us to their new friend Tib who has also just moved to Deep Valley about a year after Tacy has and the adventures that the three of them go on together. Betsy and Tacy tend to be a little bit more imaginative, a little bit more frivolous, and Tib is definitely a very rational figure but she just sort of goes along with what the other girls do and she has a different layer to their friendship. Betsy and Tacy go over the big hill, see the three girls now wanting to be like Betsy and Tacy's older sisters, wanting to go off and grow up and, and do new things like go over the big hill to new places and meeting new people of different cultures and making a brand new friend from a completely different culture than theirs. And Betsy and Tacy Go Downtown focuses on the girls now in their preteen years, these big changes happening around them. There's someone with a new automobile, them getting to go to the opera for the first time and go to the theater and just have a lot of super fun adventures, meet some new people, and 
really get to know what life is like outside of Deep Valley without ever, ever leaving their homes. The next four books in the series focus on Betsy's time in high school, and these are my favorite four books in the series. I think probably because I relate to them the most. So first we have Heaven to Betsy. Heaven to Betsy focuses on Betsy's first year at high school, where she is dealing with all these changes of being in school, of trying to be the top of her class, trying to get the boys in her class to notice her, as well as meeting a character by the name of Joe, who becomes her academic rival, who will be important later on. Then we have Betsy in spite of herself. Betsy is still frustrated that she hasn't gotten a boyfriend yet, so she decides to try and make herself a little bit more mysterious and more alluring to try and get someone, which she does, which ends up causing some relationship issues down the road. Betsy was a junior is obviously Betsy's junior year and at this point we see that her older sister has gone to university, has gotten involved in sororities, and Betsy wants to be just like her so she and her friends decide to start their own sorority back at Deep Valley and this causes them to have these fun parties and adventures but also causes some splitting amongst the group as well as some unintended consequences at school. And finally Betsy and Joe. Remember that guy I mentioned earlier who was important? Well Betsy and Joe finally get together in their senior year. However Betsy has another friend by the name of Tony who she is trying to keep on the straight and narrow and she accidentally leads him on quite a bit and that can cause some relationships with this other relationship that she had been dreaming of having with Joe for so long. Then we have the final two books. Betsy in the Great World and Betsy's Wedding. Betsy in the Great World follows Betsy four years after her high school graduation, now going on a trip abroad to spend some time in Europe in the summer of 1914. Those of you who know anything about history may know why that could be an issue. She spends some time in Munich as well as in England, in Italy. She has a few little romantic summer flings with people that she meets along the way, as well as making a lot of new friends. Again, learning a lot about different cultures and learning about history so that she can use this information to write her books in the future. And finally we get Betsy's wedding. Betsy is getting married to, you guessed it, Joe, and now she must deal with trying to figure out how to cook, how to run a household, the difficulties of marriage, while also trying to find a husband for Tib. As I said, there are also a few other shorter books. There is Winona's Pony Cart and Carney's House Party, which focus on characters from their childhood and from their teen years. And then there is also Emily of Deep Valley, which is a book that follows a brand new character named Emily a couple years after Betsy's graduation at Deep Valley High. So that is every single book in the Betsy Tacey series. But let's talk a little bit why I think these books work so well. As I said, I wish I had found these books sooner. I feel like Betsy is such a relatable character. She reads about things in books or hears about things on the radio and she wants to incorporate that into her own life. Like hearing about, oh, there's a, a young king taking the throne in Spain. Well, why don't we have a queen coronation here? Or, oh, my sister is in a sorority. Why don't we make our own? I feel like that's something that I relate to a lot. And I think that a lot of other people probably relate to it as well. And also, as I said, these are not an autobiography. There are quite a few changes. There are a lot of similarities. A lot of things that happen in the books actually did happen in real life. A lot of the characters in the books are based on real people. And because of that real life counterpart, it creates a very intimate setting with these books, which makes them very intimate, cozy, friendly, and just very comfortable. This series is basically one long, long coming of age story, or as some people may call it, a Bildungsroman. A Bildungsroman is basically a genre which is a coming of age story, but instead of focusing on one specific moment in a person's life, it focuses on their entire formative years, basically from childhood all the way up to their early 20s. And that is exactly what this book series is. And that's something that I don't feel like we see a lot of nowadays. Sure, we have series that maybe follow someone all through high school or all through childhood, but we very rarely get to see a series that follows the development of a person's character all the way up from being an imaginative child to being a strong, self-assured woman. We get to see the successes with her writing career. We get to see her triumphs, her tribulations. We get to see the 
problems that she makes for herself. And all of that makes her a very relatable and honestly a very likable character. Also, you may be noticing this little thing right here. And I think that is the best way I could describe these books. If you love Anna Green Gables, you're gonna love these books too. If you've read the Anna Green Gables series, then you know that Anna Green Gables is the only book that focuses on her childhood. Anna of Avonlea, Anna of the Island, all of the subsequent books focus on her adulthood rather than her childhood and we don't really get to see that much of the mishaps and misadventures that she has. This series lets you do that because every single book basically focuses on a year of her life. We get to see so much more of the adventures, the miscommunications. We've got a academic rivals to lovers situation going on. Hmm? We've got her trying to change the way her hair looks because she wants to look a little bit more appealing. Hmm? It's genuinely so close to the Anna Green Gables series, except it takes place in Minnesota, and we get a whole lot more about her childhood and all of the crazy things that she does. So, if you are a fan of Anna Green Gables and you've always wished to see a little bit more of Anne, I highly recommend this book series. So, what are my final thoughts? Overall, this series is such a cozy, intimate, and lovely series to read. It's basically like a American Midwestern Anne of Green Gables. We get this very imaginative person who we get to see from childhood all the way up to adulthood. We have something that everyone will relate to. And honestly, I think if you're trying to get into classics, this is a great place to start. The first four books are focused on her childhood, which if you are an adult means that you kind of just get it for a baseline foundation of her relationships with her friends. But if you have a kid that you're trying to get into classics, it's a great way to start them as well. The rest of the books are a little bit more grown up. As I mentioned, they are following Betsy as she grows into an adult and therefore the writing follows that style as well. However, they are still fairly easy. As I mentioned, they were written only in the 1940s, which means that they're not super old-fashioned language, they are fairly understandable. So if you were looking for a new classic series, then this is definitely a good place I think to start. And honestly, I highly recommend doing it because this book series does not get enough credit or attention. But that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to let me know and give it a thumbs up. And you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stick around if you want to be notified for when my next video comes out. And let me know in the comments below, have you read the Betsy Casey books and do you feel the same way that I do about them or have you never heard of them before and this made you want to read them let me know in the comments I'd love to have a conversation with all of you but that is it for me today I hope you enjoyed and I will see all of you lovely people in the next video bye